Alright, today we're just going to be insulating the walls. We're going to get everything sheetrocked, tape coated. I think we're just going to do two coats on this. So level two smooth walls. It's basically two coats and leave it. It's just a storage room. First things first, they didn't put base plates on this pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer some base plates on that. I always recommend doing face plates over pipes, wires, anything like that. And then basically I'm going to just take a measurement, it looks like 7 or 8 foot, and I'm going to go out and cut some R13 wall insulation outside. I'm just going to cut a bunch of bats, and I'm just going to go in and put them in, throw a few staples to hold them in place, get all this insulated, and then we got about 6 or 7 sheets of sheetrock that we're going to install here. Pretty simple job, easy, but it is a lot of work, labor. There's going to be two of us, so there's not going to be too much talking because there's going to be two guys in here working, doing everything. I think on this wall he's actually going to have to frame it. So my job is to put the face plates on, insulate it, start sheet rocking, and he's going to do some framing and whatnot he needs to do. But let's get to work. Things first, they have a gas pipe here with no metal brackets. So I went ahead and got some metal brackets. We're going to throw this on the trusses. We're going to get it, get it all secured. I don't want to actually put a screw through the pipe. Of course, the screw is not going to go through the pipe. But you always want to use these metal brackets whenever you can. You want to cover gas pipes, water lines, electric lines. They're basic hammer-on framing plates to protect it. Not only for me putting sheetrock screws through and hitting the pipes, if they install cabinets, pictures, anything getting hung on the walls, screws go through, that way it protects it. Especially wires, you don't want to put a screw through a wire and then you get a short and then it's hard to trace that wire mistake in the wall, so it's easier while these walls are open to put metal brackets. Of course, electrician, the plumber, gas guy, they should have did this. If I go into a job and I see it, I let the homeowner know that it needs to be done. And I offer the service of hammering on these plates for an extra cost. No problem. But first things first, double check all your framing, any nails, screws. Get them all removed. Double check your framing. Make sure it's all framed correctly. Metal brackets, everything in place. Once the framing looks good, then you can do some measurements and see how you want to lay out your sheetrock. This one calls for insulation. Most jobs I don't like to do insulation unless they're going to pay extra for it. I don't like getting the stuff on me. It irritates my skin. So with this I'm wearing a mask. Full cover. Guy I'm working with thinks I'm crazy but I don't like this stuff getting on my skin. I definitely don't like breathing the stuff in the air. So I'm going to wear a mask and keep it clean. I just don't want this stuff bothering me because it's early in the morning and I don't want this stuff on me all day as I work, sweat, whatever. It's easier for me to take off a long sleeve shirt, take the gloves off, stuff like that. So once you get it all insulated, it looks good. i have go through, since it's bat insulation, I'm going to put some staples every foot or so. Just to tack the bats into the inside framing. A lot of guys don't do this. You definitely have to do this if you're doing ceilings. Walls, not really that important. But if you got staples, go ahead and take the extra time and staple them on. It just makes everything nice and tight and sealed up. Just a clean layout. It doesn't take no time. Plenty of staples every foot or so. No big deal. That way the insulation's done. It's all sealed up. Now you can go through and basically do a layout of your sheet rock. Sometimes I want to measure both sides and see what my sheet's going to lay out. Since I'm doing a full sheet, I need to see what the 8 foot length, or if you're doing longer sheets, 12 foot, where you're going to lay it out. That way you're center on the stud. I don't want to have to start cutting sheet rock right away. I want to start laying out full pieces if possible. 
Also, you're going to notice on this sheet rock, I just stacked two sheets on one wall and created a railroad butt. It's no big deal. It's just a closet. I didn't want to cut down a sheet and stagger it like they call brick pattern. So no big deal. It's all going to get mudded anyways, and it's just a storage room. So We're going to go through sheet rock. I'm probably using about five, maybe six sheets of drywall. We're going to run it all the way around. There's one wall that has wood on it that we're not going to sheetrock because they're going to cover it with storage cabinets. And also the guy I'm working with, he's actually framing around the water heater, making a water heater wall to enclose a water heater, and then he's going to put a door in. So he's basically doing all that while I'm doing the insulation and sheetrock process. It's basic follow along, watch and learn. I don't have no volume on because we are working together, talking stuff, have music playing, so I don't want to get any copyright. So this is just more of a watch and learn how I do it. Just a basic storage shed, no big deal. It's not like we're hanging ceilings, so it's pretty easy. If I can hang it myself, just one guy hanging full sheets, then it's pretty easy. You can basically go along one sheet at a time, one piece at a time, get everything secured. Plenty of screws. I like to use screws every four to six inches. Plenty of screws. Everything looks tight and clean. Nice layout. You're just going to get it all sheetrocked. Then going to turn around and do a tape with a fiberglass mesh tape. You can also, in the angles, you can run paper tape since it's just a storage room. I'm just going to use fiberglass mesh tape. It's easier for me to use. I know a lot of people don't like to use fiberglass in angles, but I've never had an angle crack out by using fiberglass in angles. This video is just going to show the insulation and sheetrocking and fiberglass process, the mudding process and all that. I'm just going to turn around and First coat everything using an all-purpose joint compound, and then I'm going to come back the next day, lightly sand it, and then I'm going to follow it through with another second coat. And that's all they wanted in this closet storage room was just to get two coats of mud on it and call it a day. And they're going to turn around and just primer and paint over it, and they're just going to put shelving in there and use it as a storage for all their stuff in their house. A pretty easy video, hanging sheetrock. Five, six sheets, insulation, little room though like this, just basic insulation. One roll of insulation, this R13, the basic stuff's $30 a roll. So I think on this I did three rolls of fiberglass insulation. So that's almost $100 just in insulation. Then five or six sheets of drywall. These things now are almost 15, 16 bucks each. So, you know, there's a Two, three hundred dollars just in basic materials, just doing six sheets of drywall. It's really crazy now that they're charging this for materials, but it is what it is. So, if you got a simple room that you're trying to do, like a storage room, laundry room, even a shed, storage shed, this is basically the same process. Some people like to opt in and do a 5 8 sheetrock. You can do that too, 5 8. You want to pay a little more money, use 5 8. 5 8 you're going to have to use a thicker sheetrock and longer screws. But then you might need two guys to help hang it, at least the higher part, because 5 8 sheetrock's fire rated. It is twice as heavy, sometimes three times heavier than regular lightweight or ultra lightweight half-inch sheetrock. This one just called for a half-inch sheetrock. And we got the walls insulated to the exteriors. And then, of course, you don't need to insulate your interior door doors or interior walls because what are you insulating you're just trying to keep the heat in the same room so some people like to insulate interior walls maybe as a sound barrier but if you're paying for it it's really you're not going to get any anything out of it besides sound
You got the door put in. Still got to put a square corner bead. This is going to all get cabinets. But everything sheet rocked. Fiberglass mesh tape. Took a couple hours. Five, six sheets of drywall.